Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Review Den. It's called Cyberpunk, the fusion of man and machine, silicon and skin, where upgrades to the body are paid for in humanity. We've envisaged these worlds possibly as far back as Fritz Lang's Metropolis, but I think it's safe to say the genre truly came into its own, in entertainment, in the silver screen epics of the 80s. Since then, things have been hit or miss, but us gamers have actually been pretty lucky. We've had great examples in the universes of Shadowrun, Deus Ex, Snatcher, and even the titular Cyberpunk 2077. Okay, well, maybe that one's a little bit wobbly. The point is, we have some great gamer fare in cyberpunk worlds, and thanks to the explosion in indie development, our choices are only getting better. Today, we're looking at one such release in the form of Dex. I need you, Dex. No, not that Dex. This Dex. The best way to describe Dex in one sentence would be, imagine if someone were to demake a Deus Ex game. Dex contains all the investigation, combat, and grid running of a full cyberpunk adventure RPG, but simplified into 2D. You'll unravel a conspiracy, augment your abilities, and battle thugs through the slums of Harbor Prime. The ingredients are all there. Problem is, the team may have bitten off more than they can chew, and the game winds up a bit shallow for it. I'll start on a positive note though, and admit the story they create is pretty cool. Our titular heroine, Dex, seemingly just another citizen of Harbor Prime, one of a number, is contacted by the mysterious hacker Raycast and warned of a coming government hit squad. Okay, unit, use the stairs. After a short rooftop chase that doubles as a tutorial, she's taken into the protection of hacker sympathizer Decker. Hey, more Blade Runner! Where Raycast explains why it is some shadowy organization wants her dead. Turns out, that organization is the Complex, and they've created a computer program so advanced it more or less could upset the balance of power that they themselves control. Then we were this close to an anarchist's Eden, an AI seeing everything, loyal to nothing. It wouldn't have been programmers dealing with Kether, it would have been politicians. How do you blackmail an AI if you don't have nobody doing the desiring, no family to be protecting? How do you bribe? We were this close to shaking up the entire system from the top down. Now, the complex was able to contain this Kether program within a security protocol, but not before it was able to reach out and create avatars or seeds for itself within several individuals. And one of those individuals is you. With the groundwork laid out, you'll now begin your quest proper to find out where the complex is keeping the Kether program, how to release it, if you even should, and why you were chosen in the first place. The gameplay loop is pure Deus Ex, assuming Deus Ex was much shorter but open world. You explore the city of Harbor Prime, talk to NPCs, battle enemies, and tackle side quests all in service of an overarching main quest. The real difference here is presentation. Creating a full 3D world can be daunting, so instead the development team opted for a hand-drawn side-scroller. That might seem limiting, but surprisingly the open-ended gameplay is intact. You're able to approach most mission areas from multiple paths, so you don't have to go face first into a swarm of bullets, unless of course you want to, everything's viable. And there's a decent number of secret areas blocked by puzzles, locks, or environmental hazards, so the world opens up as you level up. Think Metroidvania or Simon's Quest, but trade the platforming for information gathering. Speaking of, Dex has a decent number of NPCs to converse with, and like any good adventure RPG, they range from seemingly unrelated to the quest, but actually totally part of the quest, to helping a chef find a certain ingredient because, uh... Experience points? Now, to be fair, even those unrelated quests all aid in world building. You'll find biofarming giants have total control over food supplies, non-augmented humans are kidnapped and sold on the black market, and public officials are controlled by the highest bidder, all staples of cyberpunk dystopias and unfortunately real life. 
Just as with most games of the genre, Dex does have all the proper RPG elements, so you'll earn experience points from defeating enemies and helping NPCs, which you can use to upgrade your combat abilities, lockpicking, persuasion, all the usual suspects. What Dex adds to the mix is the hacking and augments. You can hack both computers and the nearby environment, which plays out as a top-down twin-stick shooter. You activate information nodes and destroy firewalls while fending off viruses and defenses. For computers, this gives you access to hidden information, while environmental hacking, or augmented reality, lets you disable cameras or reprogram gun turrets. It's a clever diversion that fulfills the obligatory hacking element of cyberpunk, and it's pretty cool to upgrade your abilities, so what begins with you barely able to unlock a PDA can end with you brute forcing your way through a mainframe, if you spend your points right. Augments, on the other hand, are bought and paid for and tend to focus on overall health and focus, which is your health for hacking, but do include a few environmental abilities such as high jumps and hazard protection. Combat is pretty much a given in any cyberpunk, and no difference in decks. You'll have plenty of goons and guards to take down, and while you absolutely have a variety of melee and guns to protect yourself, they're not quite as polished or balanced as they should be. Okay, they're downright exploitable. For melee, you have an upgradable retinue of punches, kicks, blocks, and rolls. The problem is, most of these upgrades are unnecessary. Sure, they help to take down enemies quicker, but even heavy enemies can be cheesed by staying directly on top of them, or by striking and then dodging repeatedly. The two most dangerous threats you'll face are unblockable heavy attacks and firearms, and both of those can be nullified by clinching into zero range and spamming some basic attacks. Now the wild card is that you'll rarely face solo enemies. This is where the challenge normally would be. Multiple enemies can group up on decks and distant targets can take pot shots at you, but these too can be overcome by spamming the hacking minigame. As long as you upgrade the augmented reality, and that's just two upgrade slots, you can repeatedly hack the enemies themselves to stun them. Any non-heavy enemy can be stopped and given an instant takedown from behind, and even heavy targets can be repeatedly stunned. If the augmented reality hacking had a cooldown timer, this might have worked. But as it stands, it's a total combat breaker. Same for stealth. Without hacking, you'd have to hide and wait for a pattern opening to take down enemies from behind. But once you get the upgrades, you can stun and subdue them without any effort. Finally, guns are available, although even without the exploit, the AI is kind of broken. Enemies will either act completely brain dead and just stand there as you whittle them down, or they'll charge right through your gunfire to knock you down. I realize gunplay can be tricky in a 2D game, but it can be done right. This just isn't it. Okay, presentation is pretty cool, though not perfect. As you can tell, this is a completely hand-drawn world. No digitization, no pixel art. Really cool. That's not to say I'm ragging on pixel art, it's become an entire subgenre with countless examples that outshine even big budget AAA games. Here though, you get a nice detailed world of high-rise buildings, dilapidated slums, neon lit alleys, and of course, the obligatory sewers. Characters look fine, and Dex is nicely animated. Everything just has a nice 90s PC art style. There's no fancy visual effects, but it runs in high res. My only complaint is that there is not enough of it. You can tell this is from a small studio. If they just added a few extra layers of animation or background details, this would be great. Hand-drawn, hand-animated art is a dying breed, so it's nice to see here. Sound-wise, the game is fully voiced, though maybe not by first-string actors, and it has a surprisingly good soundtrack. Effects-wise, it's pretty bare-bones. Pretty low-drawer stock sound bank stuff, nothing more. Now for content, this is where Dex falls a little short. I rambled on about the combat, sure, but if you don't exploit the hacking, it can be a decent playing game, but it is short. Played through the first time exploring the city and taking on quests, you can probably get a decent few days out of it. Once you've done so, you could probably complete this in just over a day, maybe even one. 
This is one of those games that was always on sale for like five bucks, and for that, especially being in a more obscure subgenre, cyberpunk, it's fine. But don't go into this expecting a long experience like Deus Ex or System Shock. On the upside, it does have multiple endings though, and it makes for a reasonably easy platinum trophy for Sony fans. And speaking of platforms, Dex is available on all modern systems, though it launched in a pretty sketchy state. The 2015 PC launch was riddled with bugs, and the entire game was overhauled into the Enhanced Edition, which is what's sold now. I can't speak to the Xbox or Switch ports, I heard the Xbox may have had some bugs, and the Switch version can be had on sale for just $1.99, which is hard to beat, but played on the PS4, it was reasonably smooth and bug-free. The only port to flat out avoid is the Vita, if it's even available anymore. I bought Dex during the PlayStation Store's cross-buy golden age and got the Vita port for free. Unfortunately, the text was barely readable and it crashed constantly, so buyers beware. The real shame behind Dex is that behind the short runtime and some very easily addressed combat exploits, the small team at Dreadlocks created a surprisingly cool universe. It's a case of a game that, while it may not be great on its own, or at least not the first time out, it feels like it has loads of potential. Having a computer program turn on its creators by reaching out to Dex and other avatars around the world makes for some very cool possibilities. Is the Kether program the answer to this world's dystopian corruption, or a case of trading one set of shackles for another? What if Dex got in contact with her fellow seeds? Would they band together or fight one another to become the first to control Kether? Spoiler alert, depending on the path you take, you even find factions of the complex in opposition to each other. The world is really creative here, but based on the game's reception, I'm not sure we'll see it again. And there we go. Thank you all so much for watching. Any other cyberpunk fans out there, and did you try Dex? And if so, what did you think? I appreciate each and every one of you, and if you'd like to help a small channel grow, would you be my next subscriber? Thanks again, and remember, no matter what, be sure to keep going, because you are worth it.